So one of the hardest precept to follow is the precept of skillful speech, right? So before we get into skillful speech, why we should follow it, what are the components of it? Why do we want to follow precept? Like why, what purpose following precept serves, right? What is the difference if I'm mindlessly talking versus what is the difference if I'm very careful with the precept, right? So what is the point of following the precept? In the context of Vipassana, there's nothing right or wrong in that sense. There's nothing wrong about, you know, mindlessly talking and there's nothing specifically right about skillful speech. In the context of Vipassana, if you're following the skillful speech, it will be easier for you to focus on your breath. It will be easier for you to cultivate Samadhi, right? And that will make Vipassana more easier and more productive. If you are not following these precepts, right? If you are not following it, specifically in this video, we're just talking about the skillful speech. If you're mindlessly talking, it will become harder for you to cultivate Samadhi or focus, right? And then it will be even harder for the Vipassana, right? So these precepts serve the underlying foundation that helps us to cultivate a samadhi, right? So coming again on the skillful speech. If your speech is skillful, right? It produce less obstacle. And the less obstacle is produced in terms of the noise in the head, it is easier for you to cultivate samadhi, right? More or less, this is the point. So what is the skillful speech, right? According to Vipassana, there are four component of skillful speech, right? The first thing is don't do idle talking. Second, don't speak harsh words. Third, um, don't lie to deceive other people. And fourth, don't do gossips or backbiting, right? So don't die, don't lie or deceive other people. Don't do gossips. Don't say harsh words, and don't do idle talking, right? So these are the four component according to Vipassana. Out of these four, I think the easiest to follow is to don't do gossips, right? So let's just start there. Gossiping or backbiting is basically behind somebody you are talking about somebody else and you know kind of uh, bad mouthing that person right if we are doing that there is a pleasure in that right that's why these things are somewhat unwholesome but addictive right there's a pleasure in gossiping right and this is a pleasure of ego. You feel good about yourself when you kind of belittle somebody else, right? And the more you do that, the mind gets attached to that kind of sensation and it produces more of that kind of a desire. And when you sit down into Vipassana or meditation, you would notice like more and more thoughts around that unwholesome activity, right? So basically it's going to, you're cultivating habit, a cultivating unwholesome speech habit because there is some pleasure into it right but this is probably the easiest to follow right just don't do the gossips right just don't belittle somebody behind their back right but if somebody else offers it you don't have to engage so much into it and you can just kind of you don't have to also make a drama out of it like you know uh, but just don't engage in that that would be that would save a lot of trouble in terms of get growing in the meditation, right? The second is don't do, don't say harsh words, right? This is also relatively easy to follow. And generally we say harsh word because we are feeling anger or another form of ego, right? Power, something around those things. So when we are engaging in these kind of affliction, we are kind of accumulating that affliction, right? Of course, when we speak out of an unskillful speech, right? When I'm saying harsh word to somebody else, there's going to be consequences socially, right? Somebody's 
who is on the recipient side of harsh word is not going to easily digest that right either it's going to fight back or you just created a difficult mental state inside somebody else but in terms of your own practice right in terms of growing in your own vipassana practice it will create difficulties right it will create more noise and you're basically accumulating more and more anger and ego right if you are speaking more harsh word towards other people so i think these two right backbiting or gossiping and not speaking harsh words is not that difficult to develop right it's just with some effort and some mindfulness we can cultivate these things then comes don't do idle talking now this is relatively difficult to do right i mean you cannot you can actually follow don't speak harsh words very rigorously because it's in your hand right but don't do idle talking is relatively difficult to do right because let's say you are in a i mean it's it maybe easier to do it in the meditation center but let's say you are in in some family or settings or some relative comes or you are in some kind of function obviously you're going to do some idle talking there right you're not expecting that uh, you will be talking the mud talks there right so idle talking we have to be at least be mindful about it right that we do not want to over do so we have to be mindful about it not taking pleasure in it right obviously you have to do certain things to function in the society but it's not something you are doing to get pleasure out of it right and at least we have to we should be limiting it right so consequences of doing idle talking is again right the more you talk the more kind of emotional reaction there will be and then more attachment and then again when you sit down for meditation you are dealing with whatever you have talked right so in terms of idle talking at least we should inspire to limit it and not engage in it to get some kind of pleasure out of it right and the last one is to do not lie or do not try to deceive other people right this is also relatively hard to follow right one thing is obviously you should not be lying to deceive and get something out of somebody right that's like probably easier to follow but being completely truthful and honest is relatively difficult to do right and sometimes it's just not practical right let's say you are into like some sales person is doing some sales stuff on you and if you are trying to be all honest <laughs> you probably get into some kind of you know uh, difficult situation with them right so for me like saying just a count of it no and you know yeah 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 i do own this product already <laughs> something around those line will save you some time right so it would be ideal actually to be extremely truthful and honest and it will be very useful in the practice but i'm not sure how practical it is to be completely honest all the time right but we need to but we should at least inspire to be as close to that and we really have to inspire to be very mindful about our speech right what are the underlying cause because of which i am saying this right if we are actually lying and the most of the time what happens is we end up lying to impress other people right to get more acceptance or some kind of a we try to pretend in certain way to become a part of certain group right and that kind of lying is basically feeding into your need for acceptance right and then it will create it will cultivate that kind of a affliction inside you and then again it will become harder and harder to actually get rid of these things right so we at least have to be we really have to inspire to be truthful and honest all the time but at the very least we have to be mindful about our speech and our intentions behind the speech right and try to get as close to that as possible right 
so that's pretty much all about skillful speech right not so easy to follow and we have to be always involved in it very easy to do in the meditation center especially in that 10 day course because you're just silent all the time but having that precepts in place would really help to cultivate samadhi and that really helps to cultivate vipassana